Hey everyone, this is Kat. So in this video, I'm going to give you a tour of one of my Frostville houses. It's in New Hallis in Frostbank Sea. It's the Erlisi Manor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick run through, show you guys the undecorated uh, hey bare bones version, and then I'm going to take you through uh, what I've done with it for Frostville. And I thought while I show you guys around, I will read you since it's the season, uh, a Frostville Carol and maybe, uh, maybe a little bit about the grump if we have time. So a Frostville Carol being the tale of Murgot Mizzlefig, McScrugal's corporation and its impact on the holiday of Frostville throughout Norath. So this is the preface. I have endeavored in this ghostly little book to explain why Frostfell should be the most profitable of seasons. May it haunt the houses of those who read it with a desire to earn a living, honest or otherwise. Your faithful friend and servant, MMM. Stave 1. Those Annoying Frostvellians. For the past 20 years, the Frostfell elves and fay have endeavored to change me. At first, their visitations during Frostfell did indeed give me pause. I considered their message of charity towards others and harmony to all living things. And yet, there is no profit in living this way. Why should I give away the hard-earned coins within my grasp to someone else? And truly, the loss of sleep on the night of these Frostfell visits was harming me for the work at hand. Profit! Yes, profit! And soon enough, even the Frostfell folk, those merry and capering fools, learned the cost of maintaining these annual Frostfell visitations upon others. For soon, they replaced the actual ghost of my associations with cheaper imitations due to budgetary constraints. Their decision led me to finding a way of my own to allow myself a night of sweet, uninterrupted repose. Using my skills and the backbones of my own cheap laborers, I discovered a way to allow someone else to take on the task of attending to those ghosts on my behalf for next to nothing. Kaching. Stave two, the first of the three ghosts. And so, in my stead, someone else was forced to live through the events that supposedly shared my past. Alas, my business partner Marlin, whose specter troubled me the most, for I owned him some plat, and do not want to repay it. In some years, the Frostwell Elves would present Lonnie Cogspinner, my ex-girlfriend, whose ghost is available much more cheaply than she ever was in life. At other times, I have had endure I have had to endure a giggle gibber impersonating my father. They so annoy me. Comes now, Gwenda gurgly giggle gibber, the ghost of Frostwell past and waste of breathable air. This time it is Lanny Coxpinner, tale of misplaced woe that we must endure. Does no one realize that this chatty little flizz gig dumped me on feast day? Why do the Frostwell Elves and Fay feel that this apparition would move me to change my ways? I enjoy seeing her again, though, as it gives me enormous pleasure to remember how much I had saved through the years by not having her drain my bank accounts for the creams and potions she must surely need to stay presentable. Ha! Stave three, the second of the three ghosts, Gurgus Giggle Gibbert, ghost of Frostwell present, is not particularly bright. Within the folds of his cloak huddle two miserable young Giggle Gibbers, ignorantly and what, who had been accidentally sewn into the garment's lining. Ah, a visit to the home of Bobby Critchat, a family of petulant losers, if ever there was one, and Tiny Jim, the most whiny of all. This is usually when the giggle gibbers try to pile it on thick, having me clean the house and do chores. Not this time. Stay four. The last of the ghost. A truly frightening apparition, Gilby Giggle Gibber, should not really wear that particular shade of red. This is the worst part of the whole visitation, for the ghost of Frostwell Future does not take you into a warm, if somewhat uncomfortable home. Instead, he drags you out to the middle of an icy valley and gives you no hint as to how to find the future. I've done this one 19 times before. But you, my friend, you are on your own. Just remember there is a reward for finishing this task. ka -ching. What's that? Oh, you want the key to the mystery? The secrets of the maze? I give you but one piece of advice. Find a high point 
and gaze across the valley. The canyons of ice and snow are meant to confuse us. They are intended to show us that we must all make choices in our lives that can lead us astray. The unrelenting sameness of each sparkling blue wall thrusting upwards from the snow like a blank slate is to show you that we can each of us write our own story. It is annoying beyond words. 19 seasons, I have lost countless hours negotiating the maze, but no longer. For yes, we can all score the icy walls with the pathetic scribbles of our worthless lives. And to what purpose? What gain can be had in this wretched exercise? Nothing but the loss of a night's sleep and the usual hourly wage. Pathetic. The giggle gibbers wish me to learn that Frostfell is a time of giving and charity. Bah! The only giving should be shoppers giving me their hard-earned coin. The only charity should be buying only McScrugal Corporation goods and redistributing them to the poor. That is giving. That is charity. Kaching. Step 5. The end of it. Ah, to wake the final morning of Frostfell fully rested and full of energy, I throw open the window of my boudoir and exclaim to the butcher's boy who passes below, You there, boy! Yes, yes, I mean you, lad. What day is it? Today, sir? Why, it's Frostville Day, sir. I had not been bothered through the night, finally. A good rest does wonders for the spirit of someone long used to being annoyed throughout the long watches of the night by frivolous Frostvillian do-gooders. And so, dear friend, I thank you for assisting me to this end. I, Murgot, Mizzlefig, Mixkrugel, appreciate your assistance this Frostville season and reward you with not only this book that celebrates your adventure, but also a warm and seasonal Frostville cloak which, I might add, was left over from a batch of poorly cut fabric and comes at no cost to me. Therefore, you have not only given me the gift of rest, but also are taking something off my hands that is absolutely worthless to me, but of potentially great value to you. This, my friend, is a true message that McScrugal Corporation wishes to impart this Frostville season. Kaching. So why the grump hated Frostfell? Every goblin in Gibbleville liked Frostfell time a lot, but Grimagus, Grapple Rouser, Giggle Gibber did not. Grimagus hated gifting day, that whole Frostfell time, when gifting and gabbing and giggling gave cheer. It could be he, he thought, his own gifts weren't quite right. It could be, mayhaps, that his funds were too tight. But the reason most likely, and let us be blunt, was the horrible youth he had spent as a runt. He thought of the times when he was quite so small, the other giggle-gibbers called him a goofball. Grimagus moped in the corner or they tossed him around, and he peeped not a word and he would not make a sound. His lunch coin would fall from his pockets with ease as the other giggle-gibbers taunted and teased. Though now he is rich and owns the whole town, Those were sad times when they called him a clown. Grimagus grew into a mischievous teener and wider and richer and quite a lot meaner. Over time, Grimagus outgrew being a chump. In fact, all the giggle gibbers now call him the grump. He was grumpy and snarly and bossy most days, especially during the goblins' few holidays. Holiday time always made the grump bleak. He remembered those days when he was young and weak. And the festive time he hated... Most of all was Frostville time when folks tall and small, when folks young and old and folks far and near would exchange little presents and be of good cheer. They're buying their presents, he said now with a growl. Gift giving day is tomorrow. That day, oh, most foul. He pounded his fist and he cried with a sneer. There will be no gifting day. Not no how this year. He thought of the elves with their boxes and bows. He thought of them singing and twinkling their toes. He thought of those elves made him quite sneery. They were chipper and sparkly and impossibly cheery. They've never been sad, never gone without gifts, and that is something I simply must fix. I'll stop Frostville time, his eyes glinted with glee. I'll start in the cities. I'll make them all flee. The grump plotted how he could bag up the goods that were sure to bring Frostville time cheer to the hoods. I'll take all the feasts and baubles and toys that were meant for all the good girls and boys. The grump found himself empty boxes and bags, and he then bundled up in some tattered and tat and rags. 
and he raced through the villages, he raced through the hoods, he swiped and he stole, and he took what he could. He took the wrapped gifts, he took the cooked feast, the grump even took the pies of minced meats. And as he was leaving, his sack bulging with stuff, the adventurer shouted, Enough is enough! We know you're unhappy because of the past when the other giggle gibbers made you an outcast. They gathered around him and he braced for a fight. Don't be mad, said one. We will put the past right. Though you were put down and all the presents got broke, it is that a reason to take from innocent folk? Snarled the grump, do not judge my sad childhood, but said one tiny elf, you used to be good. And deep down inside, the grump felt himself sway. He had once been good. What had made him this way? The grump stared at the small group and realized at last that they weren't being mean. They were all just downcast. And he knew deep inside he was no Frostfell hater. He'd hid in his heart like a prestigitator. He'd give back the presents. He'd give back the feast. He'd even return all the pies of minced meats. The littlest elf extended her hand and invited the goblin to visit her land. Come stay with us, said the elf. We'll help you stay true. And that's exactly what Grimagus Grabble Rouser Giggle Gibber did too. The end. All right. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. You liked the tour of my house. Have a very happy holiday and a safe and healthy 2021. And I wanted to especially thank everybody who has subbed to my channel who's left comments, uh, and giving me thumbs up. I really appreciate all. Thank you guys. And I will see you next year.